well in Scotland. The SNP is preparing for a leadership contest after Hamza Yusuf uh, announced his resignation. Uh, he admitted he underestimated the level of upset he would cause by cutting political ties with the Greens. A bit late now, Hamza. Well, he will continue in his post until a replacement is found. I bear no ill will and certainly bear no grudge against anyone. Politics can be a brutal business. It takes its toll on your physical and mental health. Your family suffer alongside you. I am in absolute debt to my wonderful wife, my beautiful children and my wider family for putting up with me over the years. I'm afraid you'll be seeing a lot more of me uh, from now. Let's go to Kevin Schofield. Kevin's the political editor of the Huffington Post. So, uh, Kevin, he underestimated uh, the fallout, the level of offence that, that, that he caused. A bit late now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, I, I don't know what he was thinking, really. It was, it was the manner in which he dumped the Greens last week rather than the act of dumping them himself. He dragged them into his official residence in Edinburgh, then he sent them out to face the music. Uh, and understandably... They were very unhappy and they took the first opportunity that came along to exact their revenge. And that was to say that they were going to vote uh, in favour of a Conservative motion of no confidence in Hamza Youssef. And from that moment on, his political career was over effectively. Uh, he didn't have the numbers uh, to defeat that motion. And so we ended up yesterday with him mm. chucking it. It's interesting when we look at well, not only where the party has gone and what it represents. I mean, a lot of people have been critical, haven't they, that it's become a one-issue or two-issue party obsessed with independence, but also things like trans ideology. And they've neglected the important things like running the country, education and, and transport and all the rest Health. of it. What will happen if John Swinney, who seems to be at the, the favourite at the moment, gets uh, crowned as the new leader? Because he, of course, he's massively in favour of trans self-ID and also an LGBT curriculum and, and is Proudly progressive, as they say. Well, yeah, so Hamza Yusuf, he uh, presented himself in the leadership contest last year as the continuity candidate, the one who would continue Nicola Sturgeon's legacy. Now, John Swinney was Nicola Sturgeon's deputy first minister, so he's been described as the, the continuity, continuity candidate. So what you might get is more of the same when a lot of people in the SNP would say, well, that's what's got us into this mess in the first place, so maybe we need to try something different. I think the person to keep an eye on later today will be Kate Forbes, who narrowly lost out to Hamza Youssef last mm. year. She was very critical of the Nicola Sturgeon legacy in last year's um, leadership contest. If she were to stand again, then it would be a proper contest, a battle of ideas of where the party should go in the mm. future. But it looked yesterday as though all the senior party figures were starting to row in behind John Swinney. Stephen Flynn, who's the Westminster leader, supports John Swinney. Uh, his predecessor, Ian Blackford, also said he supports John Swinney. So certainly there's a big move amongst senior SNP figures, I think, for um, John Swinney to get the job without a contest, to get it over and done with as quickly as possible and try to move on. But if Kate Forbes announced that she's standing, mm. then obviously all bets are off. But but who, John, in general, you know, looking at the other parties, does one of them stand to gain more than, than others with the demise of the SNP? Yeah, well, Labour certainly are um, on the march in Scotland at the moment. There was another poll out yesterday which showed them, I think, one point ahead or neck and neck with the SNP as far as Holyrood voting intention is concerned. The same goes for Westminster um, voting intention. The Labour are very optimistic about picking up a lot of seats in Scotland uh, at the general election. So, yeah, Labour at the moment are rubbing their hands with glee at, this, at the state of the SNP and hoping that they can um, usurp them as the preeminent party north of the border. The Conservatives, they're still roughly around about 18%, so they're not as well-placed as Labour to take advantage of the SNP's troubles. Um, I heard Sir Keir Starmer being described yesterday as a very lucky general because he's only had to sit back and watch the Tory psychodrama in Westminster, the collapse of the SNP leadership, put absolutely no policies forward particularly, but really see the poll ratings go through. I mean, there's, there's some truth in that, isn't there? Absolutely. Well, you've only got to look at the chaos that there's been with the Conservatives going through different prime ministers. Now the SNP seem to be following their lead. I think it's, it's largely because of the fact that both parties have been in power for such a long time. The SNP have been in power now remarkably for 17 years in Scotland and eventually political gravity 
kicks in and uh, you can no longer be as popular because you've made mistakes, there's, you've been involved in scandals, controversies, and these things all catch up with you. And I think that's what's happened with the SNP now. OK. Kevin Schofield, thanks very much indeed. Thanks, Kevin. Cheers.